Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, we've got another inbox review. Uh, my friend Tim, uh, Timothy Ivert, uh, is Tim's Desk London. Please go and look at his channel. It's um, he does a lot of wing nut wing stuff, um, and it's brilliant. His wing nut wings builds are fantastic. You must go and see him. If you do nothing else, if you turn the video off now, that's the one thing you must do. Right. Um, anyway. He was selling one of these, and uh, I'd seen it, and it's, uh, you know when you come across a kit, that you see it, and just looking at it, you think, oh, I've got to have that kit. It's, you know, it's it was one of them buys. I'd just seen it, and I thought, wow. Um, and oddly enough, I'm big on box art. I love box art, and I like this. I know it's strange because it's sort of uh, a sepia type colour and there's a sort of dark yellow box if you like sort of but I really like this this style um, so we'll do a quick look around on here uh, so I believe it's pronounced Grosher Hund Grosher Hund I think I'm not certain on that but I think that's how it's pronounced and there's a whole set of these uh, so the model length is 153 millimeters, which is obviously 15.3 centimeters, and the sorry, that's the length, and the width is 84 millimeters, so 8.4 centimeters wide. Well, oh, that's uh, that's because that's inches. Uh, where's where's the centimeters gone? They are on. Yeah, it's about that bit. Yeah, I see. So anyway, it's 120th scale. It's a Mark 05. Um, uh, I think when I got this, I paid £40 for it. Um, there's a lot of information on the back. Uh, humanoid unarmed interceptor. Uh, so it's made by Hasegawa. Um, very interesting. There's loads of information on here. Loads of information. Engine Maybach, Maybach 720 TRM. I don't know whether that's a, a real engine or whether this is because uh, obviously these is a made-up sort of uh, affair. And we've got um, a, a sort of foil logo there, so that's obviously important to, to say that it's genuine. We'll go and have a look over at the desk. Right. So, as you can see, it's quite a big box. Um, it won't fit in quite on the uh, overhead, but it's uh, basically uh, th about 13 by 7.5 inches, the box size, and depth just in case you want to know for posting is about just over three inches um, so we've done we've already done the um, the box the box art we've done all the various sides just go over them one more time so that you can pause them if you should want to um, it really is uh, I'm going to try and move that, uh, I wonder if that, if I turn that off will that work any better? No, it's just the instructions might be, they whited out a bit on the last one, so I don't want that to happen again. So I'm just going to keep the top bits out. And put everything in there and then I, as I move it over so first of all decals and oh it's not been opened that's a shame oh well 
I've got to redo this properly. I'm going to have to open the decals. Excuse me while I just So it comes with a nice um, card that uh, shows you where the decals go and um, it's got three separate colour schemes on there, unfortunately I don't read uh, Japanese so I can't tell you uh, what those are, just to zoom in a little bit so we can see each one, we've got that one and this one and this appears to be the the one with the directions for um, putting the decals on um, colors as for you know telling you the colors is the painting guide I, I, I can't figure that out at all um, and it doesn't show up very well because everything's sort of got this this brownish tinge to it so you, you know you can't tell is that green there or is, is that meant to be white um, you know it's very difficult to know now I have noticed that they've got holes punched out so these are obviously for collectors that they'll go in a little binder and um, as you build these kits you will collect these um, so I probably shouldn't have took it out of the bag <laughs> Now we come to the decals. Now let's have a look at the decals. Hasegawa. Um, they're made in Japan. So I don't think they're cartograph. Um, they feel actually they feel quite thick. Now I just need to move that at least out of the way of it. That's a bit better. So we've got this white back yeah that's better that's much better so let's zoom in a little bit and I don't know if you can whether you're going to pick up on the, the ridges on the they're quite thick um, I don't like the fact that this number 18 here I would uh, rather have had two separate one and an eight and then put them on um, instead they've got the one and the eight together as one and they've got this film holding it together in the middle I don't know whether I like that or not but that's just a personal preference that's nothing more than that um, it's not a criticism at all that's you know that's just the way they do it there'll be others that will praise it and think yes that's an excellent idea and so you know but they look okay you know yeah so no no problems there and they've gone a bit more instead of just having just having tissue paper they've actually put a wax sheet um, in with it I don't know if that's any different any anything beneficial over the bit of paper but, um, <clears throat> right then we come on to the instructions now we have got a uh, correct method for applying decals so this is like a caution sheet and here we have the uh, we're going to have to go right out for this unfortunately and um, this is a bit like Tamiya in that it folds out so I've never built one of these before, never. Uh, I have no idea whatsoever um, what is connecting where. 
so I'm just going to go through this and all I'm going to do is repeat what's written down on there um, if you want to have a closer look I'll give a few seconds at the end of each page so that you can pause it and zoom in um, it will take me ages to zoom in and do individual sections and, and I really don't know what any of these parts are so we'll start with we've got the sprue maps obviously here and we've got a paint I'm guessing that's a paint call out but I don't know what paint so have to use a bit of artistic license I think so we've got legs assembly um, right leg left leg right leg left leg that's, that's all I can tell you I'm sorry and then we move on to right leg right leg waist these are all waist assemblies um, then we've got the body assembly which is starting here and the body going together there body, more body assembly there and then we come over to this page and it's right hand, right arm left arm, left arm elbow joints so I'm guessing it's articulate in um, I'm wondering whether it's uh, a bit of a mix of a Bandai uh, Hasegawa because so, there seems to be some polycaps I've noticed some of these uh, some of these joints look as though they might be movable and we know who the masters are at that Bandai they're, they're the kings at that um, or queens so instant glue for metal it's saying uh, I think it means super glue and we've got shoulder assembly going on here there's the head assembly assemble with order I can't tell you what that assemble with order means assemble in order maybe I don't know so shoulder assembly shoulder shoulder and then we've got the weapon assembly body assembly arms going on final assembly here and then we've got all sort of bits and bobs going on and I think that's it yeah that's uh, so there's 43 steps that's quite a lot there's a lot to take in there so it's uh, I think it's going to be a lot of small parts uh, quite a detailed kit and uh, it's going to be quite in depth so I looking at that I would say it's not a beginner's kit but um, we'll wait until we see the, the parts <clears throat> so we've got a small bag first and these are just sort of joints I don't even know whether it's worth me opening them there's a bit of cable a bit of cabling a bit of trunk in like uh, hose cables and what look as though they're going to be lots of joints well, I'll just zoom in I'm not going to open that pack for that because these are the sort of bits that go missing nothing really to see in there <coughs> so then everything looks as though it comes in one bag all in one bag let's take that off Let's put them down there. 
and we'll start with and already I noticed that this feels heavy this plastic feels heavy um, let's try and we might need to bring this lamp back a little bit now so um, it's a bit scuffed and that but uh, you know it's to be expected everything's packed all in one bag there's going to be scuffs uh, but nothing that we can't uh, resolve or sort out ourselves so uh, it is part of modelling unfortunately you know if it's uh, well no not unfortunately I was about to say that wrong um, it's part of uh, I mean if you bought a kit if every kit you bought just snapped together or glued together with absolute perfection and uh, there was no challenge in anything you done you would get pretty damn bored um, but the fact that you get the odd kit that comes along that throws a curveball um, and you think shit what's happened here uh, how am I going to get around this that makes you think about what you're going to do next um, that's great because then when you've finished it you, you've got something there that you've actually had to work on that you've actually had to put some thought and some effort into it's sat on the shelf looks great um, and uh, you know that you've you've earned uh, the praise that it gets when people come in and see it so here we look to have part of this, maybe the part of the body here again it's heavy plastic it really is I know I keep saying that but um, compared to other sprues you notice it the minute you pick it up there's not much in the way of detail on these on the main body works but there is on these parts here let's see if we can go in Let's just uh, come on. Probably zoomed in a tiny bit too much. There we go. So, got some nice detail on the smaller pieces. And come along there. Some detail in there. I don't know whether these are, could these be parts of arms, I don't know. This looks like it could be a leg, upper leg maybe. Who knows, on the other side. They've been along and tried to remove a lot of the uh, ejector pin marks. I can see that straight away. It seems to be a thing with Tasagawa. And they have got rid of the majority of them. You can see them very faint, but they've done, you know, if even on these smaller bits. Not on these, though. On these other bits they have. I think they seem to have done it where it's important, where they where they deem it's important you can especially see it on these um, and you can definitely see it in those you can see the different shades in the where they've scratched them out brilliant and again not much in the way of detail but I think the problem is a lot of these small pieces are the detail like this piece has got a little bit of detail on here and I reckon possibly that's going to fit inside somewhere else like this it could make the centre of a radar dish or something 
move that out of the way, it's interfering with the uh, That's a nice uh, finish to it. And that's an identical sprue there. Yeah, that's an identical sprue. So we don't need to see that one. Let me move on to these. These look like foot pads. I don't know if they are, but they look as though they could be the bottom of feet. They've got that look to them. And shoulder areas. Again, nothing on them. And then we've got these uh, small bits of detail here and there. Nothing on the back side. Nothing else to see really. So it's an odd one really. There's just the the pieces themselves are very bland. But this doesn't put me off at all because I still think this is going to make a spectacular kit. So we've got uh, where are we? a little bit of detail going on in that one. And in that one. Nothing else anywhere else really. I'll just zoom out so you can see what I mean. Uh, it's just they're just all pretty plain I think this is the sort of model that once it's built you're going to have all your like I say you can have all your detail from your little pieces that you put on um, and then it's going to be down to your painting, texturing, weathering. That's what's going to build this kit. That's what's going to make this kit good. So you're going to need to be on top of your game. So we've got some um, springs there. Some springs going on there. Again, very little anywhere else. The small parts have got little bits of detail. Um, these sorts of kits are massively popular over in Japan and the Far East. Is it the Far East? Yeah. And uh, we've got some delicate. Uh, delicate piece of there there we go very delicate be careful we don't get damn damaged while they're uh, Again, more, more of the same. Just trying to show you the. This could be a leg part there, or maybe arms. We've got the smaller pieces. So yeah, I mean this is definitely not a beginner's kit by any stretch of the imagination. 
and um, we've got some tiny tiny teeny tiny parts here are they uh, we've got some bolts that you actually I've I've come across these before and they were a pain in the ass. Well, they they when they worked they worked very well, um, but basically they're your the ends of your nuts that you normally see. Uh, yes, ha ha. Um, and so there's your bolts. And you've got to cut them off with uh, your hobby knife. And what I found to do was get a bit best to do was get a bit of um, double-sided sticky tape, cut these off, clean them up one by one, and then stick them on your double-sided sticky tape. Um, then, uh, depending on where they were going. I would then spray them uh, like a, a metal colour, a steel colour and then do the individual nut in the middle on the outside, sorry, maybe do that a, a, a brighter metal finish or depending on the look you're going for uh, but I'm hoping they've given us more than we need because they're very easy to lose um, and they can be a real pain but yeah and then we've got some more of these see there they've uh, put them on the sprue yet here you've got to cut them off it doesn't make any sense um, they're screw heads they're screw heads I wonder are these spares could be. Right, see. And there's another one, identical. So there's a lot of identical uh, sprues in here. Well, which is again, where well, there's going to be because you're doing a body and it's symmetry. It's basic symmetry. So yeah, we've seen this. We've seen this sprue already. Just a different. And have we seen this one as well? Um, I think possibly we have. Quite possibly we have. But there we go. So, I think that's it. It is. So, that's been the Grosher Hund. Hand? Hund? Uh, by Hasegawa. Um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching the review um, and don't forget to uh, pop along and give Tim's Desk London a look at and uh, subscribe to him if you're not already and uh, also subscribe to me if you're not subscribed already and uh, thanks for watching um, all that's left for me to say now is happy modeling and goodbye <laughs>